will come to watercolor in March of 2021. So this month we have a four week class and uh, we are going to have some fun. I have got with me some tools that, um, that I will show you how to use. And hopefully you have at least one or two examples of that in your house so that you can try it too. Um, I will show these tools more like towards the end of the class so that you can try and find them and in preparation for next class. Um, so for this class, we are again going to work on trees. Ooh. And um, this time uh, we will try and put the emphasis on using the dry brush to, um, to be able to make the edge of the leaves more diffused and uh, uh, try to avoid where we can having a sharp edge. So for class today, uh, what, we, what I have planned for you is I have planned um, to use a sheet of watercolor paper to, uh, to practice the dry brush me method so I'll show you different ways to do this. And also um, we'll need this, our sketch pad because we'll be doing a, a simple drawing of our tree in preparation for next week. And if we are very fast at doing all of this, then we'll start painting the tree. Uh, so last time we had the class, we painted a tree that looked like this. This mm -hmm. was painted with a sarin wrap. This time we will paint a tree that may look like something like this. Ooh. Using Ooh, different methods. Nice. Yes. Um, and this tree can also be done in uh, with the fall colors. And now I forget where I put that one. The fall color tree. Ah, here it is. This is the example of the fall color trees. Similar method. And I want to bring your attention to see on the tree trunk, the nice texture that we have here. Ooh. This is done with a dry brush, this, this texture. And also um, like when you see something like this, see here, this is also done with a dry brush. And there are different ways to do the dry brush method and we're gonna try them. So when we look down here, for example, this little, strip of leaves is done with a dry brush, but this is not done with a dry brush. This here with a hard, hard edge, that's, um, that's just done with the wet, wet page. All right, so I wanted to start by talking to you just for like a couple of minutes about the watercolor paper. So when we buy watercolor paper, so when we buy watercolor paper, um, there is a, a usually the, the weight of the paper. In this case, this paper is 140 pounds. Um, but you know, if you were to weigh one sheet of paper, it doesn't weigh 140 pounds. Um, this measurement is obtained uh, by weighing a certain number of sheets of watercolor paper that are uh, of the full size. Now the full size of watercolor paper is usually 22 by 30. And I say usually because it's an approximate number, the good watercolor paper is handmade. And so therefore the size might vary a little bit, you know, going one way or the other. So a full sheet of watercolor paper is approximately 22 by 30 inches. And to get a weight of 140 pounds, like in the example of the watercolor paper I showed you, um, the, the, um, what they do is they weigh together 500 sheets of watercolor paper. And that is supposed to amount to, 100, uh, to 140 pound in the case of this watercolor paper. 
There's also watercolor paper that is um, uh, 300 pounds. So then they, they weigh together 500 sheet measuring 22 by 30. And that's what they use as their measurement um, scale uh, to say this is the right, you know, this is the right weight for, for, these, for this, this paper. So I thought it was uh, kind of interesting to know this. Now, there's another characteristic for watercolor paper. I, you may have heard this before, but I'm just gonna repeat it here quickly. There are three different kinds of watercolor paper. There is the, um, the, the cold press, the one that we usually use, that's the most commonly used. And um, this is like medium, so on this watercolor paper, it says gold press right here. Uh, and then I have this other example here. This is Archer. So uh, cold press. So the cold press watercolor paper is a medium grain or a medium roughness. Some people will say this is rough and um, if you want a watercolor paper that has even more texture, then uh, you need to buy a very rough, which is, um, they call it the very rough watercolor paper. And this one has more texture to it. And as a result, if you're painting water, for example, then it will be easier to get the effect of the water, like the, the, glis the glistening on top of the, the water. So if we look very closely, we can see that the watercolor paper has texture. You can see it here. So, and this texture is described as having ridges and valleys. So the valleys is like the little holes that you see everywhere. And the ridges is where the watercolor paper is more elevated. So. When we look at it, you know, just normal, it's really hard to see these differences. But if we were to blow it up, do a close up of the watercolor paper, then it would, you know, it would be easier uh, to see. But because the water, um, because the watercolor paper has ridges and valleys, that's why sometimes it's possible to paint like only the surface. So that therefore it will, so let's say that this is a blow up of the watercolor paper. It's got the ridges and it's got the valleys in between. So if I were to paint like only the top, then everything in between would stay white and it would give me the nice effect of the dry brush that I was talking about. So this is like um, just an example of what it could look if we were to blow it up really, really big. Um, there is also a third kind of watercolor paper, and it's called, uh, it's a hot press watercolor paper. That one's very smooth. Um, so watercolor artists who paint um, portraits, for example, might prefer um, a smooth watercolor paper because then they can easily do a very, uh, you know, smooth face and, um, and they have more control over that. So I had an idea. So um, now this tree here, so when I painted this area, for example, so this area was painted in using the dry brush. And what happened, especially in these little areas here, so the top of the ridges caught the pigments and where it stayed white, it was the valleys that stayed white. So for example, over here or over here, we have the same example. And mostly on the other one that I showed you. So this is a very good example of it. So here, some of the ridges caught the paint, whatever is in between stayed the background color, which was a, a light gray tone. And uh, this was done with a dry brush. So you can see it here and there. That I, that's the method that I used. 
So dry brush, I mean, dry brush means, it doesn't mean that your brush is dry. It means that uh, you have put it in the water and you have tried to remove as much water from the brush on your pip towel, or some people use a sponge um, as possible. So the brush is actually damp when we use it. Okay, that's, that's a very good question. So your watercolor paper seems to be smooth, even though it's, it's, it's cold pressed. Yeah. So in, when, um, when using watercolor paper, it's, I'm gonna remute you now. Yeah, please keep my mouth shut. Okay. Uh, so when using watercolor paper, it's very important to know which is the front and which is the back. So for example, in this little pad, if I were to open you know, the, the pad, this would be the front of the watercolor paper. And this is where the ridges would be. The back of the sheet does not necessarily have the same nice texture. And it's true also for arches. And it's true probably for most watercolor paper. So on one side, you have a lot of ridges. So if I were to show you this one here like this, you can see the ridges, you know? And then if I show you the other side, uh, it's pretty smooth. There are still some ridges, but it's not as, uh, it's not the, the side that was meant to be painted on. So the front, knowing which is the front, which is the back. So if you take it out of the pad and you don't immediately use it, you should lightly write on your, your watercolor paper with a pencil, you know, front and back. Or maybe you could just put the back on the back. Since you're not gonna paint on the back, it, it won't hurt anything. But some watercolor paper will have more ridges than other, even though they're all let's say uh, if you compare cold press from one brand to the next, the texture might vary a little bit, um, especially when the paper is made handmade. So even in one brand, maybe one sheet will be more uh, textury than the next sheet. I mean, it's very subtle, uh, but knowing which is the front and which is the back is very important in watercolor paper. That was a very good question. So, um, actually, perhaps we should start with drawing our tree. And before we draw the tree, I'm going to show you um, what I mean by the tree, you know, what we need in terms of shapes for the tree. It's going to look like something like this. So the tree trunk is what we draw in a little bit more detail, but the leaves are just a couple of, of large areas. And when we actually paint it, we might even go outside of these areas. So these markings would be just a guide to painting our tree. And what I did is I, um, I'm gonna share my screen because I have this to show you the steps of um, how to uh, draw the tree. So I have, the steps of it on this, I thought that would be the easiest tree class. So I think this is the one. So draw a tree with foliage. And it looks like, like this. Yeah, make this bigger. Um, so can you see how there are the different steps are here? So starting with this and then we'll do this and then we'll do this. You know, so what I did is I, I did the steps because painting the branches sometimes it's, it's a little, it gets a little confusing. And I thought that if I put the different steps, um, 
and also uh, uh, the different steps of what branch goes first and, and the next and the next, then it might help. And also, um, I, I have a large, you know, area with just a few branch here at the bottom, because I want to make sure when you start painting your branches, that you leave a large area at the top to put all the foliage, because the foliage is where we're going to have some fun. So in the end, you know, your, your foliage will be added on top of all these branches that will be at the bottom of your, of your paper. So this will be, this would be done in your sketchbook. And um, I think unless you guys have questions, I would like to give you maybe 10 minutes to draw this on your own in your sketchbook. Um, I think a picture is worth a million words. So instead of me talking, I'll, I'll put on some music and have you do your, your sketch of the tree. Now, is this big enough? Can you see it good? Can you go, you can go like this if it's a yes, yes. Leslie, you can't see well? Um, I can see it, but a little bit bigger would be good, but that's okay if you can't. Okay, okay, let me do a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's better. It's better? Yeah. So I want to make sure that everybody can see all the steps. Yeah. And um, so you, if you're, if you're confident, you can look at the last, you know, the last drawing and just draw that from there. But if you're a little hesitant and so you're missing branches and stuff, then um, then I suggest that that you start with the, you know, first and go in sequence. So to do this next step, what you need is you need a watercolor paper. Um, on taped either on a board or you can use a watercolor paper if you have Archer. Then um, if you have a block of watercolor paper, then you can just open up the cover and you're ready. Because this block has, it's the paper is glued on all sides. So you can see the black is glued. It's glued on all sides except there is a little opening here in the back. And then that's where you can insert your nail or, or a knife or a, a blade of some sort to, to separate this from the rest. Once it's painted, because to paint it is so convenient, you don't have to tape it all around. It's already glued all around. So for this exercise, I'm going to use, um, a piece of paper that I taped here. And uh, I and we will use the yellow and the blue to do this exercise. And um, we will also use uh, some green. Um, so if you want to prepare your colors, that would be a good idea. To paint with a dry brush means paint with a brush that has been put in the water, but has been wiped on either, you know, a paper towel a lot, or maybe a sponge. So the important is that once you have, you know, removed the water from it, the, the brush is still damp, it's not dry, but you have removed as much water as you can from, from the brush. And this means that I'm going to paint with a dry brush. So this brush here, actually it's, it's a little too small. So I like to do this with a slightly larger brush. So I'm gonna use either this one or actually better yet, I have this one that's in the water. And, but my water is so dirty, I'm gonna change it. I just happen to have another bowl of water right there. Isn't that nice? Okay. So I'm gonna use a fairly big brush. So this brush here um, is, I mean, it's a, well, it's medium size, but this brush holds a lot of water. So one of the ways that I can make sure that I've dried it is I can squeeze a little bit of the, you know, 
this here. And then I've removed a lot of water. See, even now there's still water in it. So now this brush, although still damp, is pretty dry. And so in order to create the effects that I want, I have my watercolor paper right here. This is 140 pound. And now I'm gonna dip my brush into the, the color. And to do this, just so you can see very well on my paper, I'm gonna use my blue. So I have some blue here that's quite thick and I'm gonna pick up uh, you know, some blue and then, oops, yeah. So I'm gonna pick up some blue and now I have the blue on this side of my brush. I did not really put any on this side. So on the side that I didn't have, I'm gonna just make sure that I've removed, I'm removing, you know, the water some more. And now I'm gonna paint with this. So this is where my, my paint is. And one way that you can do this is, well, let's just start, I'm just gonna start here at the bottom. It's just, just try it. So if you paint like this, uh, if you paint with the tip, you're gonna get the normal kind of brush stroke that we always do. Um, but if you lean your brush a little bit, like, or quite a bit and paint, you know, sideways like this, then you're gonna get some neat effect. So if I go like this, And if I paint fast, I get some very neat effects. So if I put that closer to the camera. So here I painted with the tip. I still got a very, very sharp edge. But here I leaned my brush and see how it's creating these nice effects. And here I painted really fast. This whole while I did not dip my brush back into the water or the paint. And it gave me these nice effect, uh, this, which is what I needed. So how about if you try this? Or would you like to see another demonstration before trying it? Yes, another demonstration. Okay. So first is, so you, you, your brush is in the water. So you want to make sure you have a clean brush. And then once your brush is clean, then you wanna make sure that you remove as much water from your brush as you can. So if you have a large brush like this and that, that gathers a lot of water, I like to pinch it, not pull, just pinch and um, remove as much water as I can from the brush. Once I've removed you know, most of the water from it, you can see there's not a whole lot of water now that goes onto the, um, the, um, the the scut towel, ooh, I should say the paper towel, sorry. Um, then uh, I dip it into my blue. I'm, I'm using blue, you can use any of your colors. But I'm, let's, this time, let, let me see, let me see. I prepared some red, I'm gonna dip it into my red. So I try not to go like this to dip it into it. I just go and, and put it like sideways, like this. So now I have, and this water, this color is more watery. So now I have water, I have the paint on this side, and if I turn it over, there's not, an, there's not really a whole lot of paint on this side. So my, my paint is on this side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry a little bit more because when I picked up the paint, I picked up some water. So on the back of it, and you can see that the, the paint went through. So now this is the side on which I put the color on. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna first paint with just the tip. You'll see that it still gives me a pretty sharp edge when I paint with the tip. When I put it like almost flat on the paper, then when I, when I do this, it catches the ridges but not so much the valley. And if I paint really fast, then I can get this effect where the color in some areas like here, 
you know, it still covers the whole area, but see on the edge, it creates these nice effect. Uh, and the rougher the paper, then the, the, the better you'll have the effect. And you can see here, one other way that you can do this is if you paint really fast and you go like this, see how it created all these nice effect. Think of a tree trunk and how it would be beautiful to have this effect on a tree trunk or any kind of texture surface. Let's see a barn, you know, to, cre to create the effect of old, old wood. So try, it. this is your sandbox, try it. I'll give you five minutes to try this. So if it doesn't work, try again. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Oops, my light just went out. This time, uh, we're going to do another little practice of doing the dry brush, but we're going to start with a brush uh, that is not completely dry. Uh, so we're going to try with a wet brush. We're going to initiate the painting with the wet brush. And eventually, as we paint less and less, paint, water will be on the brush. And so therefore, uh, we will get to the dry brush like so. And to do this, I'm going to mix, I'm going to use my grain just so that um, it's a different, different method. All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm still drawing my brush, but when I dip it into the paint, I'm going to completely dip my, my brush. So now I have a lot of paint on my brush on either side and I start painting. I'm gonna do it here at the bottom. So as I'm painting, because I dried my brush before I put it in the, the, the paint, um, and I didn't wet my paper first. I mean, this is wet, but it doesn't have a runny kind of wet. It's a very, um, it's, it has a lot of pigment and a little water. It's still wet, but it's drying very fast. And so therefore, if I don't wet the paper first, and I first I I dried my brush a little bit, then I completely put it in in the paint, and then I paint. As I paint, then if I go outside and if I put my brush sideways, eventually I get to a point where there's less and less um, there's less and less pigment and water on my brush, and eventually. I get to, to a point where, you know, I can actually create the dry brush method. So if I go like this, for example, then you, know, you can think of a tree that has, uh, you know, some of the branches, or I should say the, uh, the leaves. But you can go like this. I can't hear you, Claire. So you can go like this and see, I haven't put it back into the, the paint. And now the more I paint, the more I'm getting, you know, soft edges because it's a dry brush method that's happening on the edges. So now, um, do you have any questions on this? Or are you ready to try this out? And just remember to breathe. Okay. <laughs> In this other method, uh, we're going to start with um, we're going to start with a wet paper. Now, I drew on here uh, a little square just so you see. The amount of um, the amount of paper that I will that I will wet. You don't have to draw this. It's just to show you so you can see. Because once I've wet it, it will be hard for you to see how much water I've put. So it's just to tell you, I'm just only going to wet this area, okay? And then this will be part of my demonstration. So that's why I drew this. You don't have to draw it. Um, it's not. Not that important. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use a round brush that is slightly smaller than the brush I've used so far. Uh, so 
Oops, I just realized I don't have any green. I don't have any green left. Well, that's okay. I can make it on the fly. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna wet this part of my paper, this square area here. Now my paper is leaning, so it might run a little bit, but I'm hoping not. So I'm got, uh, so I've wet this area, and now I'm gonna start with um, yellow. So if I've dipped my brush into the yellow, and I paint this area yellow. And now to do the dry brush on the outside of the square, I'm just gonna wipe my my brush a little bit, you know, on the paper. And after I've done this, then I don't turn it around. I leave it in this way. And then I continue painting, going from the wet area, going outside, and it creates all of this nice dry brush method on the outside. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it into my green, dip my brush into my green. It's a, it's a fairly light green that I have and only paint the bottom part. Now the two colors are mixing because it's wet on wet. And I'm painting with the side of my brush And then as I go outside, now I have less and less water on my brush and it's creating all this nice dry brush texture. And I could, if I have another darker blue, um, darker green, which I don't, so I'm just gonna make one right now on the fly. Uh, so now I'm dipping into my darker green and I'm adding this darker green right here. I can see how this is very wet. So now that I've put a little bit of water of color on my on my paper, I'm drawing my my brush. And now I'm gonna create these nice effects over here with the dry brush and mixing those two colors together, wet on wet. And if it's drying really fast like it is for me, then, um, then you've accomplished what we're trying to do. So now here, if I show this to you close, you can easily imagine this is very nice foliage that is sticking out from the tree. And then the light is coming from this direction and then we have the mid-tone because now the, the tree is like this. So it gives the effect of you know, having something that's kind of round. And here, this is the area that's in total shadow. So I've created this foliage by going from a slight, you know, slightly wet area that's in the middle. And I went outside to create all this nice effect of the leaves that is in the sun with the yellow. Then I used my light green in the middle. And then I went with darker green here at the bottom because it was wet, then it all mixed together. And uh, because I was painting sideways and there was less, and I removed the water from my brush, I was able to create this nice effect of the foliage here on the side. So, your turn. Any questions on this? Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my paper in the little rectangle that I made. And of course you guys are, are working flat so there's no risk of, you know, of, um, of running down, running, but I just wanna make sure you can see it on the camera. Now I, I take this brush and I completely put it in the yellow. Did you dry it first? No. No. Um, and I 
completely put it in the yellow that I'm going to, you know, cover the whole area that I've, that I've wet already. And, um, this is running. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this brush. It has, it still has the yellow on it and I'm going to dry it like this. So I'm drawing it, I'm drawing it, I'm drawing it. And then as I, I can see that it's, it has a lot less water on it now. Now, I don't turn it, I leave it like this. So this area of, that's towards my hands, the area that I dried, and now I'm gonna go like this, sideways, to create the, you know, the foliage like this. Now, using this brush, without putting it in the water, I'm gonna put in my lime green, which I don't really have a whole lot of. Um, so I'm using my lime green. And I'm gonna paint here in the wet to create the effect of the foliage. And maybe dry my brush again on the paper towel and then create this effect over here. Oops, too much, too much. And then I'm gonna clean my brush because I need to make some green. Dry it in darker green. I'm picking up this darker green. Doesn't have a whole lot of water in it. But, uh, and then I'm gonna put this darker green down here. Oh, not enough pigment. Yeah, that's good. Wet on wet so that the two greens will merge. And now I'm gonna dry my brush and I'm gonna create this effect down here of the dry brush, like so. Now don't hesitate to scumble in all sorts of ways and then turn it. And now it's gonna create all these great effects. And um, now we have a second demonstration done. So in this case, I don't have a whole lot of pigment down here. It's still kind of a little wet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more pigment, a little bit more pigment, sorry. I was talking behind the microphone. And you know, I could add a little bit more of the darkness because this is under. Um, now I'm drying my brush and just making sure that on the edges, then I'm creating this nice dark brush effect. So in this case, this area was almost dry already of the yellow. So that's why it created somewhat of a hard edge between my green, my light, light green and the yellow, but it's still a nice effect. Uh, and then when I added the darker green, then this was, the light green was still wet and it created more of a softer kind of edge, but you can still see here on the edge, you know, the nice effect though, if you can imagine this is kind of foliage, the light's coming from this direction, hitting a tree. And so this whole area is more in the light than here, it's more in the dark. I hope that helped. Yes, it did. It okay. Did. So Thank you. Claire, I was yes. just gonna So in the tree that we're going to paint, you know, there is the nice foliage and we've practiced a lot about this foliage. Now look, there's also these nice little twigs that we practiced a lot of in February. Now you guys are masters at this, I bet. Uh, of course, there's also the, the, the tree, the tree trunk. And uh, in, even in the fall color one, there's also all these nice twigs. And then in here, especially there's this nice dry brush so um, I thought I would show you ways to create twigs. I know that I've showed you last month some ways, but there are all sorts of different ways. Now, um, in your house, you may have some of this, and you know you can you can spend this week to try and find it. 
you know, find what will work for yourself. I'm going to demonstrate here how to make twigs in different ways. So I'm just demonstrating. I'm not asking you to do the same thing because I didn't ask you to get these. But um, I don't know if you know that, but I really like to, to eat, to, to chew on gum. It is my kind. So what I did, see it's got a little flap that opens up. So I cut out this part of the flap uh, from another one. And now I have this. But see how this has an edge here? And it's got an edge here. So what I do, this is one way you can paint the twigs. So for example, I'm just going to make them red. So I have the red paint that I put a little bit of right here on my palette. And then I dip it, I dip the whole edge in this and I go like this. Look at these twigs. Look how fine and thin they are. And straight. So that's one way. I mean, you can, I'm just using red right now, but uh, you can use, you know, any color you want. And, you know, the, the twigs, some are darker, some are lighter. You can see because I only dipped uh, one for five marks and one for four marks. So that's one way to do the twigs. I mean, you can wet this and you can attempt to go like this. Now that's harder. If you just tap it once, you get the exact imprint. So this is one thing you can use. Now with this same thing, another effect that you can have, not that we're gonna use it, but I thought I'd show you anyway. So you can go like this and just go like this. Kind of give you this nice effect that probably we'll use one day, but maybe not in this class. So that's one thing that you can use. Now I also like to, um, to buy uh, this cardboard that's called tea bar bar. Anyway, any kind of cardboard. So this one will give you uh, a, a thicker twig because it's a little bit thicker than this other one. Um, it's more like a regular cardboard. So let's see if I do this with this. Now my twigs are a little thicker. So they give a little bit of a thicker mark. And um, how about if I use something else like uh, an expired credit card? So I cut out the numbers and I cut out, I, I have this edge here that's still very, very um, straight. Um, I don't like to keep it whole just because I don't want to uh, reveal some of this information. So let me use some blue for this. So I'm putting some blue here. And um, so I'm going to, I'm going to wet this whole area, this whole area and do one twig. Ah, this is more tricky with this one. It gives, um, so this one I'll get sideways a little bit and it gives an, uh, an edge or a line that is not Clear your, your your um your voice goes in and out. Oh, sorry. I don't. Hurt. That's okay. Just at the when you come closer to the uh, microphone, I think. Yes, yes, and I will try to resolve that uh, by having a proper set of headset that actually works. Um, but thank you for for letting me know. So with this, it gives an a line that is incomplete, but sometimes that's like, that might be what we need. Now, one other thing that I wanted to show you was that um, one way that sometimes, you know, we have the little, um, the little grass, like a grassy area at the bottom. So maybe I'll wet my, let's say this is grass. So let me add some green to this. So let's say this is my grass and I have some little twigs of grass that go up. So I could use this and go like this to create 
my graphs that go up, or I could use, you know, this other one here. So go from wet to light, you know, to the, the area that's dry. And now I'm creating this grassy effect. That's kind of interesting. So that's one tool, one other tool that you can use. Um, the cardboard is good. Yeah, the cardboard is, is working. So, and so sometimes we need to do a house. And for some people, the house is just, it's just a hard thing to do, to do it uh, straight and right. So let's see, let's see if I completely wet this area here. Um, so you got to have this quite wet, not dry at all. So I've wet this area here with paint and pigment. Now, this is a, a cookie cutter that I have. And so you could use a cookie cutter to say, okay, this is the edge of my, it's not working as well with a cookie cutter. I think I have to use more like uh, the edge of this. So with this, I can say, okay, this is the edge of my house. That's the roof line. This is the roof line as well. And then go like this to indicate the other roof. And this one here. Now it's starting to dry up. So I'm just gonna go like this. And then I have my ground. Now I have a house. So think of sometimes to make the, you know, the, the the straight edge is pretty hard, but sometimes you can use some tools that will help you do it. So for next week, I mean, you can also find something like uh, so I used to have a I used to have a little calculator in this. So this edge will probably be something like if I need a log, something very straight uh, that I could use for this. See, this could create some nice texture. Whoops, maybe you don't see very well, but I so see now I scraped all of this down and it gave me some nice nice texture. So these are things that could be used. Cookie cutter, that uh, could work. I mean, you have to try different things and see what will work. So for next week, I suggest that you have with you uh, at least, you know, something that would be probably uh, one or two inches. That's um, maybe just a little cardboard, you know, before you put your uh, box of cereal to the recycle, cut out a little piece. And you can have different lengths. Maybe you can have a length like this, and a longer one, or maybe, uh, you know, maybe a one inch or two inches. We're going to do a lot of tweaks next week, so having the right tools would work. I like this one. It gives me very thin. And this is a little bit of a glossy kind of paper, so I think it resists more. Um, it will last a little longer. So these are things that I suggest that you have for next class so you can do the tweaks easily instead of um, doing it the same way that we have been doing it before with the brush. I mean, we're just trying something new. Uh, I haven't tried this, but some people say that if you have a pellet knife, uh, you could potentially use the edge of it, dip it in the, in the paint. So let's see if I try this, just tap it. Uh, it's not that easy. That one is not an easy one to use, but you can try it, you know, different things. And uh, I also wanted to show you a couple of little paintings that I have done with my acrylics. Fun things like uh, this little, a little pair. 
Um, very <gasps> cool. On four by four canvas. And then uh, I also did little apple. I love those. Yes, I love the small ones. Yeah. I do. I mean, so fun to do. So I gave my hairdresser one of the ones you made at Christmas, the little ones, and she has it up on her. Um, she's all, all kinds of you know shelves, and everybody's commented. She's called the Lotus Lotus Salon. Everything's Lotus, but there's one little picture that you did that everybody comments on. Oh. One of the little houses you did. Oh, they love it. Yeah. Yeah, they're the two by the two by yeah. three watercolors that they were I amazed. Did. They were right. amazed. So thank you. Yeah, I couldn't give mine away. I have two of them. I kept two. Yeah. I have a pair. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> they're beautiful. Just they more. There's more. There's more in my studio available. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be looking for stuff. So if if you want to give someone a little gift, they're $20. They're framed. Cool. Um, so I had also prepared a slideshow that I wanted to show you of painting from others. However, um, I think we're running out of time. 